still covered his nakedness. He still ran to go and hide. Anybody who saw him would have said, Hey, Adam not die. You see, say, I tell you, say, God not serious. You see, say, Adam not die. What is God people say? They will say, don't fornicate. They will say, don't steal. First way they fornicate every month, still they marry on Saturday. They never die. Because the death was not physical death. He didn't die in his body. He died in his spirit. What is spiritual death? It is separation from God. Adam was separated from God. He no longer had capacity to call God father. Immediately he died. Satan became the spiritual father of man. What Adam lost in the garden is not his bank account. What Adam lost in the garden is not his health necessarily. What Adam lost in the garden is his fatherhood. He died to God. So God had to drive him out of his presence because such a man could no longer do business with God. Because when you are doing business with a God who is spirit, what you use to contact God is your spirit. If your spirit is dead, you can no longer have fellowship with God. So Adam needed to be what? Driven out. He died. So when you go to ShopRite and you see a young lady with bomb shots, hmm, looking like an, a harlot, the Bible says there's something called the attire of a harlot. That means the way you dress, we can tell your identity. Mm. We can. They do man no kobe, zebro zubo. When they are praying in tongues in church, you are praying. Then when you leave church and you're outside, all your breast is outside. Until which holy ghost do you have? That did not tell you, my daughter, your breast is outside. Which holy ghost do you have? I can assure you it's not the Holy Spirit. It is, it is bones that they put in show glass. They put bones in show glass. You know when you go and buy roasted corn? The reason roasted corn is not inside a bag. Have you ever gone to where they are roasting corn? Then they are roasting it inside bag. Have you seen them roasting corn inside bag? You know why? It's for sale. So they put it in the public. So anybody, anybody that comes, that's why I don't eat roasted corn. If I want to eat roasted corn, I have to roast it in my house. Because if you go there, you will touch it. You say, this one never done. We don't know whether that hand, when you finish using toilet, you wash it. We don't know. You will turn the corn like this. Turn it like this. Say, ah, this one not done. Or bole. They will touch the bole like this. Touch the bole like this. Touch the... That hand. Hmm. That's how some sisters walk about on the road. They are like roasted corn. Breast outside. Body outside. What are you selling? Why not just go and stick on your head and put a price so that we can be pricing you on the road? People who know whom they serve, they know that they are, that lap is still private part. They know. That's private part. They know. There's something called the attire of the harlot. So you see somebody in shop right he looks half naked and one boy with one kind of hair around her and they are just doing and you say Kai, you are envying them you are, you are a clown you are envying a dead body it's like you going to Ekman Central Hospital you say where the mortuary where the mortuary they say see mortuary you enter I say Kai. say dead body fine they say see as dead body fine they say dead body fine they say yes I like be dead body That's what Christians do. They are envying dead men. Men that have not met Jesus. Because he drives a Benz and she lives in a fine house. If she doesn't have Jesus, her life is not fine. It may look like it's a good life before men. But when we die, you will now find out that many people that you think were enjoying, they never lived. They were corpses. So if you go to AJ now, there are some dead bodies licking ice cream. This night, some dead people are going to have sex in their death. And heaven is weeping over their lives. They are dead. Tonight, you need to look at your life and find out, have I truly been cleansed from all my idols? Why is this a matter? I need to begin to tie this up. Why is this a matter? Let me show you a scripture. Give me Exodus 34. Give me verse 11. Exodus 34, verse 11. I read two more scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. Exodus 34, 
and verse 11. Let's read something quickly. Are you getting blessed tonight? Now they have come out of Egypt. God is now speaking to them. He says, observe that which I command thee when? This day. Behold, I drive out from before thee the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hevite and the Jebusite. Verse 12. Take heed to thyself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Jesus, God is saying to them, be careful you cannot make covenants with unbelievers. It's the same thing Paul was saying in the New Testament. That light and darkness cannot fellowship. Go, go, go for that. Go for that. Next verse. But ye shall do what? Are you looking at it? Ye shall do what? Break down their what? And cut down their what? Groves. That is, you are going to deal with all the places where they worship their strange gods. Next verse. For thou shalt worship no other word for the Lord. Somebody say the Lord. Lord. Whose name is what? I can't hear you. His name is what? His name is what? He is a what? Zealous God. Hey, hey. You know what Moses was telling them? He brought them to the mountain and he was saying to them, God doesn't want to share you with idols. <laughs> this God whom you say you want to serve is a God that keeps covenant. And one of his covenants is that if you are his child, he doesn't want to share you with what? How can you claim that you have been sanctified? You have been cleansed with water and you are sleeping with someone who is not your husband. You can't do business with this God. He's a jealous God. He will kill you. If not now, when you die, he's not ashamed to send you to hellfire. He's not emotional. In the Old Testament, this is why they were afraid of God. The things we do now. Oh my God. If you have tried it in the Old Testament. Church go be empty. Because the one that watched pornography. The one that masturbated in the night. The one that has become a gambler. He's a thief. Gambling has taken over his soul. Then we'll come and then. Maybe Siri is leading worship now. She now says, lift up holy hands. You now raise your hand. Thunder, the thunder. In the Old Testament, many would not have survived. It was just strange incense. Go and read your Bible. Just strange incense. They refused to mix the incense according to the sacred laws of God. And they brought it into God's presence. The Bible says fire from the presence of the Lord. Consume them. After God killed them. Eh? Their father. Now wanted to go and mourn. God said if I hear it. You cannot mourn your own children. You are a priest. I'm tired of being around Christian space. Where men cannot control their urge for sex. Are you a dog? Cannot control their urge for sex. Even some unbelievers that don't know God, they live by principle. I will not sleep with anybody who is not my wife till I marry. Christians cannot control their appetite for sex. Young men are speaking in tongues, but they are slaves of pornography. And they want to do business with the holy God. You are joking. Young girls cannot keep themselves. Two of them will say that they are Christians preparing for marriage. In the night, they will be doing all kinds of strange things. You come to young people's meetings, they are asking questions like, 
Can I kiss when I'm in courtship? Oh God! All the years that you did, you did not kiss, your teeth was falling from your mouth. We woke up one day and saw that you had lost all your 32 teeth. They said, what happened? They said, hey, he didn't kiss, he didn't kiss. So his teeth fell out. This one year, six months, two years, that you are going to be in courtship and marry, you are, you are not thinking, can, can I kiss, can I kiss, can I kiss, can I kiss? That's why my generation does not have power. In Exodus chapter 11, and, and, and chapter 15, verse 11, he began to describe God. He said, the God whom we serve, he is glorious. Anamakazia. Glorious in holiness. Who is like thee, O oh God? Among the gods. Who is like thee? What are you? Glorious in holiness? Fearful in praises? Always doing what? Wonders. This is a progression in the spirit. If you don't know the glory of holiness, you will not know how to praise him in fear. And when you don't know how to praise him in fear, you will never experience his wonders. That's why the average Christian is powerless. Powerless. On Monday, they are in the beds of strange women. On Tuesday, they are in gambling houses. On Wednesday, they are drinking beer here and there. Under the excuse of take a little alcohol for your stomach steak, they forgot in the same Bible, the Bible says wine is a mocker. It's a mocker. He said, give wine only to them that are perishing. It's for men that are dying. It's not for men that are alive. On Thursday, you are, you are, you are in another shrine looking for help. Because the God whom you serve, you think he's taking too long. Then on Sunday, you want to come into church like an actor. And come and say, I came to meet with Jesus. Even, even Satan is laughing. He said, look at this clown. Satan is more afraid of God than the average Christian. Satan. The Christian doesn't fear God. Can lie in the office, steal money from their madam. Be a chronic fornicator. And then come to church to pretend. I came to tell you that you attended this conference, you no longer have excuse. <laughs> God is going to hold this thing I am teaching against you. You don't have excuse. Say, it's my body, it's my body. Some of us, when we decided to follow Jesus, at first we struggled. And then we made up our minds that no woman will see this naked body until I marry. If you've never had sex before, that thing is easy. If you've been a virgin all your life, it's easy. Because you don't know what it tastes like. But when you have fornicated before, and then you now make a covenant with your body, with God. That's when Satan will want to kill you with desire. There were days that I will be turning in my bed like this. Ah, Daddy, help me now. I have made a vow. Immediately, I will enter into a fast. Because I have known by experience that once I begin to feel like that, even when I'm walking on the road, every girl will look attractive. So what I started doing is, once my body starts crying, I will enter fast. Paul said, this is what I do. I put my body under subjection. Lest after I have preached to others, I become a castaway. My generation loves their idols. They love their immorality. That's why they are unwilling to make the sacrifices to become holy. In this city, we have homosexuals that are music ministers now. Homosexuals. We have lesbians that are leading churches in this city. By virtue of my, 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 my position in, in the body in this city, there are things I know that if I say, the body will scatter. Young people are being abused in certain places by pastors. A young girl in the sanitation department came to church. I've never seen her before. 
She appeared in my office with slippers, leg, dirty. But she was crying. She was crying from the, from the keke, crying. Cried into my campus. She was in tears. Got to my door. She was still crying. What is the matter? What is the problem? She began to tell me. Now when she will come to church, to clean church, her reverend, the man's title is reverend, will come and meet her in the bathroom and lock the door where she's washing toilet and then begin to squeeze all her breasts and squeeze all her body, her pastor. The things that happen in this city. There are girls that they think that is a thing of pride and honor to have sex with their pastor. They consider it a privilege that pastor chose me. So they are servicing pastor regularly. And we are wondering why our generation does not have power. If you want to see the glory of God, you must know his holiness. He is glorious where? In holiness. You know what God sent me to do tonight? He said, go and open the valve of my purifying fire. That's what he sent me to do tonight. He said that there are some of you, it's your season to carry a deeper dimension of him. But God does not put a dimension of him on vessels that are not purified. That are not set apart. You see me, bro? I don't want to die at this level. I was in Otefe yesterday. See the crowd for the crusade. And while I was standing there, my heart was bleeding. I said, Lord, I have not even scratched the things that you have shown me concerning my ministry. I want to be preaching on a crusade ground. And people that are in their houses, probably in the next city, will be feeling the weight of the glory. But you see, you can't carry that dimension of God without the sacrifice of holiness. That's why I live the way I live. A lady can meet me and open her breast like this and do like this. I will not be moved. And it's not pride. Such an appetite does not exist. Worst case, I will take off and protect my anointing. But to say that you see breasts, he says it's because it's because it's because it's because she showed me her breast. Uh, it's the devil. Devil. Huh. I've been warning people. Make sure you don't go to hellfire. But all those lies you have told about the devil, he, your king, he has soaked it in kerosene. He's waiting for you. Every time you did something by yourself and you blame the devil, he will remind you. That time when you thief, you say now, not me. Your own hair fire will be hair fire pro max. You know they have iPhone whatever pro max. Your own will be pro max. Follow come. It will be bespoke hair fire. Because Satan cannot make you do what you don't want to do. You stole the money because you wanted to steal it. The only thing Satan can do is suggest. You say nobody there here now. Touch the woman breast. Touch. Sleep with the boy. Nobody will know. He will suggest. But Satan cannot make you do what you don't want to do. If you want to fornicate today, just imagine that this preacher wants to fornicate. That has invited me here now. I'm eyeing one lady. Then they say, okay, let's take you to the, to the uh, uh, vestry and wait. Then the lady comes. Then I lock the door. I want to fornicate with the sister before anybody will come. Do you know, do you know the level of work to fornicate? It's like construction work, like building a house. As I am now, I'll first of all remove the shirt. There's a button here. Eh? I'll remove the shirt. Then I have to remove belt. Then zip. Then button. Then I'll now have to remove boxers. Then I'll now be the one to climb by myself. Then somebody will come and say, it was a mistake. Mistake! Something you planned. You, 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 when you were standing in front of mirror, doing your hair like this, what were you thinking you were going to do in the boy's house? You were going to play Ludo. That's why you were checking yourself in the mirror. You say it's mistake, it's mistake, mistake. And you entered bike, bike was carrying you like this. And you were going. The Holy Ghost that you claim you have did not stop you once and say, Angela, we 
where you go. It's because the Holy Ghost was speaking, but your heart for fornication. The Bible says they have become set in their ways. 